How to prioritize requirements Have you ever wondered how you easily and efficiently can prioritize requirements against each other? Which requirement is more important and which one is less? This video is the only video you need to watch in order to learn everything you need to know about how to prioritize requirements in only 8 minutes. I will show you the 4 most used techniques in the industry and in the end I will show you a bonus secret method you won't find in another video so you can impress your colleagues. Therefore make sure to watch this video until the end. Let's get started right away with technique number 1. So technique number 1 is called in or out. This technique is very simple and it's just like you have to ask yourself is the requirement needed for the first release as a bare minimum? Yes or no? These are the two paths you could answer the question. If the answer is yes, then this requirement is in, meaning it has a priority. If the answer is no, then the requirement is out of scope, meaning no priority. Let me make an example with the in or out technique. Let's imagine we have the requirement A, B and C. Now we ask ourselves, is this requirement needed as a bare minimum? If the answer is no, then this requirement is out. If the answer is yes, then it's in. In this case, requirement C would be in and the other two's would be out. After this easy technique, let me show you technique number two, the pairwise comparison. Let's imagine again we have requirement A, B, C and D and we're grouping them in pairs. So requirement A and B is a pair, requirement C and D is another pair. Now we are in this pair comparing which one is more important. Let's say for the first group the business stakeholders answer that requirement A is more important and for the second group requirement D is more important. Now we shuffle these new requirements priorities again. So now the group is requirement A and D, so the winners, and requirement B and C is the second group, so the losers of this comparison before. And here again the business stakeholders agree that requirement D is the winner and requirement B. So now from this comparison we can directly say requirement D is the most important one because it's more important than requirement A, more important than requirement C, and as requirement A is more important than B, D automatically is the most important one. The second priority is requirement A, then B, and then C. That's the pairwise comparison. So to, to bring things a bit more further, there is technique number three, the importance urgency matrix. On the y-axis you see the importance of a requirement and on the x-axis the urgency. Let's say if you have high importance and high urgency then this requirement is of high priority, meaning do it now as soon as possible. If you have high urgency but low importance then we have medium priority. So it also has to be tackled now but just not as important as high priority. For the case that we have high importance but low urgency meaning low priority for now because we can plan it for later, it's not urgent right now. And if we have low importance, low urgency, this means can we not just basically drop this requirement as it's not important and not urgent at all? So it's also maybe worth checking if this requirement is needed or not. Just to put things again into perspective, here you can see this importance urgency metric with an example. We just put in our requirements A, B, C and D and based on the importance and urgency they have a point in this coordinate system. For now requirement D and A would be of high priority, so doing it now. Then we would do requirement C and then requirement B as we can plan it for later. So now let me jump to technique number 4. It's the Moscow technique. Why Moscow? Basically M, S, C and W stand for M is must, S is should, C could and W won't. This just means Requirements in the must category are something like without this requirement we can't go live, it's a must have. So there's no discussion about it, we need them. S means that we should have this feature because it helps a lot but it's still not a must have. Could is just a nice to have, so it's nice to have it but not a must at all. And W won't means for now we are not planning it, so let's move it for later maybe. That's basically the Moscow technique, how you can prioritize requirements. After showing you all these four pretty basic and simple techniques to prioritize requirements, I want to give you a special technique you won't find in another video. This technique is all about the financial analysis. So for this example, let me jump to Microsoft Excel very briefly. So now we are in Excel. Let's assume for column A, we see all the requirements for, for now requirement A, B and C. The first column is the business value. So which value does this requirement have for the business? For example, just to calculate easily, you could say the business value means in a year, so, or in the lifespan of the application. We say in the lifespan of the application, this requirement A 
would provide $100,000 as value. The next column is the effort. Which effort is behind this requirement? It could be the IT development, also calculating risks because, because this requirement is maybe not clear, right? So every requirement has not just the value, it also has an effort to generate the value, the costs. Then we have the profit, so the business value minus the effort. So what is the profit of this requirement? And here we can see, all right, requirement B has the most profit, so we should go for requirement B, right? But no, it's not that simple, because now we also have to consider the cost of delay. What do I mean by saying cost of delay? Let's assume we can only pick one requirement, and if you pick one, we cannot pick the other two, and potentially there is a cost for this delay. So for example, there could be penalties that the government is giving us penalties or we have some, some contracts with some vendors and we don't, if we don't deliver this requirement, we have cost of delays. So based on this, we can see, okay, requirement A has a cost of 20,000 if we cannot make it, but requirement B only 3,000. So now let's have the profit minus the cost of delay, meaning what you can see right now here in the column F, if you choose requirement A, we have a profit of 2,000. If you choose requirement B, we are at par with zero. And even if we would choose only requirement C, we would made it made a negative profit of 3000, meaning we should go for requirement A because here we can maximize our profits. So now let's use this template for a much more bigger complex setting. So here in this Excel sheet, you can see a lot more requirements, not A, B, C, but A to J. And every one of these has a value, an effort, a profit and cost of delay. And now let's calculate again the profit minus the cost of delay and order it. And we can see requirement J is the one to go if you only could be able to choose one. Because here, here we can maximize the value again. Just for an example, if we would go for requirement E, which gives us a value of 100,000 and the effort is anyways negative. So probably that is not a good one to go. There are requirements really which have a more effort than the value and you should potentially not go for them. But based on cost of delay, it could be again the case to include them in your backlog planning or not. So after understanding the financial analysis, you might think we are done for now. But no, we are not. There's one thing missing I need you to know. And it is dependencies. The financial analysis assumed that all these requirements are independent of each other. And for sometimes that is the case, that's great. Then the financial analysis itself is enough. But now we also want to assume that requirements are dependent on each other. And for this, we need the special technique of the dependency tree or any dependency diagram. So let's just draw in again requirement A, B, C and D. And let's say requirement A is dependent on requirement B, meaning we can only implement requirement A if requirement B is already implemented. Just illustrating this by this arrow. And this whole thing changes everything. If the financial analysis said requirement A is the one to go, but now we have this dependency with B, we cannot go with requirement A, it's not possible. So we have to go with requirement B instead. That's the game changer here. And I want you to know this too, to really make a holistic prioritization on requirements. And that's everything you need to know. And that's basically how I would recommend you prioritizing requirements based on the financial analysis. If you do want to know more about prioritizing requirements or something like that in general, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.